and we're back for episode 19 of the Natty Muscle Radio podcast with myself, Bob Waterhouse, and my co-host, A.A. A. A. Ron Bevan, live <laughs> from lockdown Manchester. Yes, is that going to be a thing? Are you expecting to wake up tomorrow and then them say, can't go to the gym, back to the Hobbit Hall? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's weird. Uh, nothing really seems any different. Um, spoke to PC Constable Chris Edge today. He said they'd kind of stopped a few illegal raves and stuff. Um, but other than that, it's not really. It's not really changing. I think the rules are: you can go. You can't go anywhere that hasn't got a contactless card reader to take your money. Um, so if somewhere's got money, if somewhere can take your money, if you can basically pay taxes, uh, it's cool. You can't catch coronavirus, but you, you, your auntie Auntie Susan's kitchen um, is quite a breeding ground, apparently. Um, so that seems to be the case. What's so she's got a card reader. Hey, what she's got a card reader? No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm alluding to the fact that the lockdown appears to be if you can go somewhere and spend money, that's fine. But you can't go to your auntie's back garden. So yeah. unless your auntie's back garden like also happens to be a sunbed shop. Yes. It probably is in Manchester, I guess, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much how it goes, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, funny. That's uh it, it's a little bit worrying that you've got obviously them pushing back like the theatres and things like that. That's not really good news. That was the poo one. That was the rubbish thing. Yeah, it's kind of a, hmm. I know we've all said it before, but obviously time changes things, doesn't it? As for regards to how you'd feel about it. Hmm. I still don't think I'd be devastated if they said there was going to be no shows. I wouldn't be devastated, but I've come a long way, I think. So yeah. I would quite like to finish the finish the package off, if that makes yeah. sense. But on the same side, it's not it's not gonna be like if that's the case, then it's kind of like you knew that going into it. It would say uh, how should we say a a known factor before I guess I really decided to carry on the prep. So I can't really be pissed off if it because no. if it pays off, then it pays off. If it doesn't, <laughs> then Oh, we, spoke, we spoke about this like on episode one or something now, didn't we? It's like even if you, even if there's no shows, you know, you still put yourself in a position to be wherever you need to be in the future. So, you know, if that just means you go back into an off season and but don't get too heavy, and then you reset it all again next year, then great. But honestly, I think I think that's getting ahead of ourselves. I don't think this is as damning as maybe we might think for something like shows. I think we're all right. I think. I think it's just a little bit of a a weird government panic, um, very poorly handled, a quarter to nine Twitter announcement um, that you can't go and see your nan on a Friday, um, which is just weird. And I think, um, yeah, I think still be optimistic. So. Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, I battle with Lewis every day because uh, Lewis is very much like he's on prep and he looks great, just so there's no kind of misconception. But he's like, nah, there's no shows. We're not competing. Nah, mate. Uh, it's definitely not happening. <laughs> and this is him every day. So, and then I go, eh, it's probably going to happen. And then he goes, nah, mate. Because my mum, she works for the parish council. And she knows something that we don't know. And basically, there's going to be no shows. But I'm going to die anyway, just in case. And I'm like, right, okay, yeah, cool. So that's basically where me and him are at. But uh, it's good bounce. We've had quality set training sessions together. And uh, we both just keep joking that basically one of us is going home with a wooden spoon. And we're going to basically, if I beat him, when I beat him, sorry, well, that is going to have two years of basically just bringing that up the whole time because I probably won't compete for two years. Oh, and I then. And then it's going to be just in any conversation, that's just going to be what I'm going to go to every time. Oh, do, yeah. you remember that? do you remember that time I beat you at the Grand Prix? Do you remember? Or have you forgotten already? 
So you need to tell you need to tell everyone a little bit more about your sessions with Lou and the kind of um, little competition you've got going back and forth with sets and stuff because that's pretty good. It's pretty cool to have in a prep, I think, because those sessions when you're dragging a little bit, it's nice to have an extra thing. It's funny because it's like you couldn't really ask for. Um... I guess a, a better amount of banter because yeah. he is genuinely one of them people. If he beats me, he is just a, he's a better than me on that day. Doesn't necessarily mean either of us are, are better bodybuilders than either of the one, but I don't think I'd be pissed off losing to Lewis like I would be pissed off losing to someone else. Right. Because like I'm still going to be butthurt, of course, but like. I think I, it'd be like the Ronnie and Jay scenario where it's like right. he wasn't happy when he beat Ronnie because he was like almost like, oh, I actually feel bad for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it would be that kind of thing because we have that kind of relationship where it's like, you know, we know each other are good. It's just like, you know, who's going to hit yeah. it on the day kind of. So, uh, so it's fun. probably funny. So um, the sessions have been jokes. It's been uh, just Lewis's banter all over and just been good fun to only beat each other on every single set we we'd like tally chat it so it's like if i win the set that's one nil waterfinger and then if he wins the set it's one nil black finger so this is what he calls himself so. <laughs> so yeah so it's uh it's been pretty funny but um yeah very good for i must say without rambling on the strength has been great during prep this year i don't know why I don't one. know if I can really test it to anything other than the fact that maybe I've rested a bit more. Mm. Um, maybe the fact that just having to have done the basics and no machines and yeah. maybe it's that. I don't know. But we'll get well, I mean, getting back to some getting back to gyms has been interesting in that first couple of times on pieces of kit felt a bit weird. But then Overall, the strength has stayed, and I think you're right. I think having access to the even the most basic lifts, but with enough weight, allowed you to maintain your strength. You know, it didn't fall off at all, which would which would then mean that your training intensity and quality of workouts did, wasn't really affected by training at home. You know, most important thing: more muscle. Yes, lots more muscle. So, yeah, it's uh, it's good. I, I am very excited still about competing. Um, I think that will be the, the the most wounding thing of it all is that, you know, you won't be able to kind of like showcase, I guess, the, the new improved package, so to speak. And if it's a new improved package, I'm sure it will be. But, you know, yeah. it's really hard to tell, even at like, you know, six to ten weeks out or whatever, like, whether you actually look any better, it's really until you yeah. kind of maybe see photos or see how you actually peak. Because you, know, you could be a couple of pounds off the mark and you think, well, I haven't really made any improvements. But then, you know, you come in another five pounds again and you're like your all time best. So it's like, yeah, you almost have to match that condition for that to be relevant, I think. Yeah. Well, it's funny as well, because I had a chat. I was chatting with some of the guys who were competing this week, some of our friends and um it come up of um it was Dan North and he was and he said oh, I felt like a bit flat this week and kind of was in his head a little bit about it and it made me laugh because I thought I know what a good starting point he had for the start of his prep so all all of his you know his check-ins and stuff is just looked full and his he, he had good levels of condition early on and now he's at the phase where he's taking that bit off you know that bit that hurts last few kilos or whatever and he's having to go flat and now he's thinking oh do i look how i should look and stuff and why i thought it's funny is because well, we spoke about it but like it doesn't matter where you are in a prep or where you start in a prep you're always going to have that bit of pain but also it's kind of irrelevant how you look or feel or how you think you might be at any step until the end because it takes someone like me when I prepped last year and I went from just very heavy to stage condition. Well, I just looked better all the time from the start of prep. I just always looked a bit better. But if you start and you have 
good condition at the start of your prep, like a lean off season or whatever, there's a chance it might go like this. You might have some days where you look great at the start of prep and then you're a bit flat and stuff. So to gauge where you've got to, to gauge your improvements is nigh on impossible until you get your stage pictures back. You know, it's to, to gauge that from six weeks out, 10 weeks out, it's just really difficult. You just have to keep going until the end, really. Yeah, it, it is. It's just a, it's a strange anomaly. And, it, you know, you can, I mean, you might get some good feedback from, you know, people you may have not seen in six months' time and then yeah. go, oh, I think you're leaning what you were this time this far out or you look like your back's maybe made a few improvements. Like, I always remember being, like, really happy with the improvements I made from 2000. 13 to 16 with my back shots in uh like uh the feel good fitness locker room and it mm. wasn't really until basically i then dieted down an extra like 10 or 15 pounds to see they wasn't quite at the level of improvement that i thought they were just because yeah. actually like you know you weren't actually at stage condition you're just comparing like you know a, a leanish physique with a bit with loads more roundness and fullness but not in the same yeah. So you think, yeah. oh, I've got to triple in size, but then actually to then get the hamstrings in, to get the to get the glutes in, to actually be fully ready, it hasn't actually quite as big as you maybe think you are. So it's quite a funny one, really. I think so. It's like as, as um, my famously not good arms now. Um, they, I know you said last year as well, when I, I hit a front double in one of the posing sessions we did. It's how much better. It's like I don't actually look that bad when you're in condition. So it's also it's so difficult to see what you've brought up until you've got that final package. Because until everything's where it's meant to be and your proportions are where they're meant to be, your waist comes in and then that makes everything look a bit bigger and wider and stuff like that. It's it's really difficult to see. So, you know, that that can be tough. Yeah. So I think yeah, you can sort of I mean it, it you know what, it's a really kind of a I don't know what the word is, but it, it, it's definitely a, a head mess around where you looking at pictures of yourself and what you maybe look like 10 weeks out from a show one time before. Yeah. And you may be looking at your scale where and you're thinking how I'm better in comparison am I? But like, it's just, I mean, you're a different bodybuilder, you know, two years down the yeah. line. Yeah, you're I, different in places, you know. Yeah, I got to uh, got to see speak to Darren this week. Um, he's very... Um, looking forward to the next time that he appears on the podcast yeah yeah so he's looking forward to that okay yeah yeah i haven't got well i need a storage first so it's right it's, it's see nice. him next week so uh if i go and see him next week then i'll definitely have a uh a darren story for you good sure. good, good um but he said to me um it was after this it was after last year actually he said um, the thing you'll struggle the most with the next time round is looking back at your pictures from this year. When you've had a year that you're happy with and you like the way you looked, the next time you compete, the thing that'll be the that'll be difficult, the thing that you'll be looking at, the thing that'll be in your head is, do I look the same as last time? At least as a minimum. <laughs> do I at least look as good as last time? Or did I look better and stuff? You know, that's, that's tough. It's a problem with raising the bar, unfortunately. True. It's like it's very easy to be a package where you just look rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> if you shit, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that's the uh, the, and it said like you can look at pictures like I put a picture up this week. I'm sure yeah. you can. Um, of of progression from 2013 to 17 of a most muscular shot. Yeah. But you know what really bugs me about them photos is that I feel like my legs look better back in 2013. Okay. But in reality, I'm just not tensing them same. Yeah. Because if actually you really pull in that detail into your hips, gives you more detail, but your legs don't quite look as round. Right. So when you're looking, like I haven't got all that nice uh, detail in the first picture of um, all your hip flexors where it's cross striated into it, because that's probably why like you know two or three years later i was then like another four or five pounds lighter again okay to really bring in them extra little bits of detail so i think that i probably have to give up some leg fullness to actually get everything in right that's the trade-off and it's yeah. you know that that's where it's hard to go okay like i remember even someone saying to me like in 2016 it's like i thought your legs looked better in 2013 and then like that played on my mind a lot 
And it was mm. like, well, what was I doing for legs back then? It was nothing different. Yeah. Um, if anything, you know, I'm stronger now than I was then. But I think that when you look back, I said, like, you're just tensing them differently and they're just, like, dead full. And so you've still got the silly outside sweep, but there's not as much detail. So in, in real life, you know, watching all that muscle move and contract, and that's why they say, you know, you've got to be at shows. That's right. where it will just look that much more impressive. Sometimes photos don't, don't do it justice, you know. So and it's funny as well because I think... The body parts that you have, that are not you, people have, that are whether they're genetically strong or you've brought them up early and now they're just a strong body part, I think those are the ones that well, they'll, they'll just look the same all the time. But for things like you mentioned, you feel like you have to sacrifice a little leg fullness to make sure that they are hard and then everything else is hard as well. Mm. I think that's interesting because... Like I've seen you posing now and your legs are very hard, harder than your upper body. And so if that means you have to, con so you have to continue dieting from the point you've got now, you've got more weight to come off, but your legs are already ahead in condition. So does that, some, so something's going to come from that area, you know? And it's likewise for, for something like for my kind of like um, arms and shoulder top line area, um, midway through a prep, starts to look quite impressive and full and stuff like that. But then as we do that kind of grinding and as we get to the end where we really have to take away the last bits, a lot of fullness comes from those areas. And I think, the, you know, the converse would be true for you because, you know, your your strongest body parts would be your top line, you know, arms, chest, shoulder. And that's never going to lose any fullness for anything, you know. Yeah. So I think when, I think those body parts that you've either brought up or you wouldn't consider your strongest genetic body parts. They're the ones that sometimes have to go, okay, well, maybe I'll take away a little bit of fullness yeah. to, to and, call that condition. And I think that, you know, although we have this, you know, argument of condition at all costs and how people like Melvin Anthony and people like, you know, Flex Wheeler back in the day, they didn't need to have striated glutes because everything just looked that much crazy and that much fuller and that it was such a cool look. But unfortunately, you know, if you turn up to a bodybuilding stage, you know, and you haven't got hard glutes and hamstrings and someone next to you has, it's very easy to get kind of yeah. like, well, you're just not as hard. And unfortunately, that is the kind of the way that maybe the sport was, I mean, even people like Dorian, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. he may be like, you know, exposed how soft like flex was from the back because his hamstrings and glutes were just like absolutely diced to bits. I'm certain I, 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 I have been on bodybuilding stages with people that I believe I'm better bodybuilders than, but we're not, I was not in anywhere near the condition, you know? Yeah. So for us to, for us to, you know, say that it's not maybe the overarching thing would, would be false really, you know, that's, that's another topic, isn't it? It is. And I think that it's, you know, it's something you have to, um, you can very much like, the way that you look and want to bring that to a show for sure but unfortunately it won't always get judged in the favor because you're like oh, i like this look like i'm you know it's good like my legs and that have full chest and abs and everything are in and everything looks mm. great and i look like mr olympia in a tank top in the gym yeah. but fortunately you need to look more like a dead bird in in order to <laughs> yeah. do you that's what be where you need to be so do you reckon that's what Dennis James did back in the day? Do you reckon he would just get to that point, Mr. Olympia of the gym, a few weeks out back for the Olympia sort of time and be like, yeah, this is fine. Just look really sick like this. I always wonder this with, I, I think there's a, there's a big genetic component with people getting into condition. And I think there's also the, like, like people saying, people are like big Rami and stuff, you know, they just don't want to, they don't want to suffer to get like everything else in, but there's, I'm sure there's other factors to it. Like, yeah. you know, which is quite, um, you know, uh, quite a, quite an issue. I've just realized, sorry, you're going to have to keep talking because I need to plug my laptop in because it's just dropped to 5% out of nowhere. Wow. Um, so that's annoying. That's so, okay. So what, it's just in front of me though. So don't worry. I know what it is. In fact, you can probably just carry on. So, um, let's get into some bodybuilding talk. 
at last, not that we haven't just been talking about bodybuilding for the last 10 minutes. This is going to be quite a bodybuilding podcast for a bodybuilding podcast. Yes, it's what we've been waiting for since since the Arnold Classic. <laughs> since I slagged off Steve Lawrence's crap back. So tell me, what was on this weekend? Just gone. It was the Tim Gardner's Wings of Strength Yamamoto Extravaganza Tampa Pro. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tampa, Tampa, Florida. So uh, just before we get into that, I mean, I know that that Samson Dowder from the UK yeah. wouldn't even let him fly, would they? No. Uh, it's funny. Nathan Diasher had commented on some of Samson's uh, posts on the same thing um, and alluded to the fact that, you know, he doesn't think it's worth for any European or non-American athletes to even bother competing this year in the pro ranks because they're not going to be allowed to travel to America for the Olympia. So unless you're just looking to do well at a qualifier, if your overreaching goal is to qualify for the Olympia, then it's a waste of time because you're not going to get to. So that's what he thinks. And you know, if that's if, if it, you know, if, if you want to do a show and you want to win a pro show, then fine, that's still great. But he, well, you know, his idea of the goal is to get to the Olympia, then I think is he wrong? I don't know. Because, I mean, surely, ultimately, the people who are trying to win a pro show, the end goal is like the British finals. Like, you're not, I mean, you're not really doing a qualified to win a qualified. You're doing a qualified to then go compete at the finals. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Looks, maybe some people are. I don't know. But, I mean, I, it always used to baffle me when people used to do that. They used to, like, put the heart and soul into a qualifier and then not do the finals. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, other people have, you know, other commitments on and things like that. I just think, like, do you really love bodybuilding that much to just, just want to do, like, your heart and soul into a, into a qualifier and then not compete? I, I don't – it doesn't really resonate with me. I've never, ever looked at it that way. And surely, you know, the, the first time you do a show is a bit different. Yeah. Other than that, like, <laughs> as I said to you, no one really remembers who won qualifiers, so what would it really matter? Unless you just, you know, want to go and pick up a trophy each year to display at your gym yeah well we had this conversation last year and i didn't listen <laughs> until yeah, but that's, that's different it, it's different in a way the fact that you know you're doing it because you think you was capable of winning mm. to still go on to do the british finals you wasn't yeah. doing a qualifier to just do a qualifier and then quit that's yeah. that's what that's what i mean that's what bugbear is yeah, got no problems in people wanting to do every single qualifier of it just because they want stage practice and because they would like to pick up a first place trophy. Yeah, but it's not a problem with that. Well, it's when well, it's, it's like your whole intention is to do a qualifier and then give up, or well, not give up because well, just like not bother. I don't get it. Well, why is that though? Because they haven't got the minerals. The favorite Bobby quality minerals. So yeah, I guess there's a number of reasons why people don't do it, but. Oh. You know, just what's the like people who say like, and this isn't me being a dick. Probably you know, going to be you being well, a dick. Yeah. Still being a dick. Um, like, you know, I've got lots of family commitments and stuff like that. So, well, don't do one in the first place then. I don't understand. Like, why put your family and everyone through that if you're just like <laughs> gonna like win a qualifier? It doesn't it doesn't really make any sense. It's like, it's like we said. It's like we mentioned a few weeks back with committing to a diet. There's more than committing to a diet for a bodybuilding show than being willing to be in a deficit and stuff. It's really, it's committing to the season and it's seeing it as a season as well. That's a big, that was a big mindset shift to me and I think would help a lot of people and, and make us, and, and we'll see a lot of better bodybuilders if people would see it as a season and qualifiers were matches, you know, along that season almost. And not just kind of doing a qualifier and then just wimping out. But. I'm trying to think in my head of another sport where that would, might be relevant that you would do that. Like, okay, something like golf or something, because you're going to pick up a massive prize fund. You know, you're not doing yeah. that, so you can then compete at, you know. Fighting, I guess. I guess fighting. I so saw MMA, boxing, that kind of thing. It's There's not really yeah. a finals, right? Yeah, I, yeah. You know, you sort of progress through the ranks that way. But, you know, with something that has, like, you don't qualify like do a like a national qualifier for athletics and like in sprinting and then to like 
qualify for the Olympics and then like not want to go. I don't. Mm. That, like why would you not? It's want to not go? wanting to do. It's a not wanting to do it right that we don't understand. It's it's if something comes up, if you had every intention. Yes. Yeah. Oh, different. This is not the issue. But you know, if you're doing it with the intention to just do the qualifier and not see it through, then and especially yeah. if you're really good, that's right. what the really annoying thing is. Yeah. Because then it's like, oh, wait, well, remember that guy? Where was that guy from the qualifier? Do you remember that year? Um, I think it was the year my client Ben Golden won the juniors. But uh, do you remember Arms Corleone and Nana Chanti? He's an Instagram guy, but like he okay. was against Lewis in the overall at one of the shows. Okay. Yeah. Ben came second in the overall to this guy. No, Damien Harrier it was. But Damien Harrier, who was very good, and um, Arms Corleone both didn't do the, the juniors. And obviously, I think Ben had qualified like second or third for his qualifier and then ended up winning the British because like three of the top guys didn't turn up. It's like um, to win it, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, it and, and you know what, as well, um, it's it's it takes something to see it through, you know, <laughs> to do the qualifiers and then be I've got this many weeks till British to be able to do that. It can sometimes separate the wheat from the chaff, you know, the um, 2018 novice. He's going to correct me again, um, Dan Sutcliffe. So it was the Southern right, uh, the one that Poyner won. Um, the greatest novice lineup of all time. Nobody could separate it, and Dan Sutcliffe finished fifth and definitely could have won. If he'd put him in first, nobody would have batted an eye. And then he went on to win uh, British and then went to Worlds, you know. And he's seen it through, which. Yeah. A few of the other guys couldn't. And so by default, he beat them by doing that. And then he was ma massively improved and looked incredible. But none of that would have mattered if he wasn't there. So, Yeah, it's sometimes always better to come from that position, I think. I think for me, I definitely relish in that, you know, of actually yeah. doing badly. And then actually coming, um, you know, and improving. You almost sometimes need that little bit of like, you know, yeah. but her to be able to bring the best out in you which brings us on to our next point topic of the okay. Tampa pro which we okay, let's try and talk about the Tampa pro then yeah wicked so it was class it was amazing to have bodybuilding back like so good Cara and i even stayed up with qe on whatsapp till 1 30 last night watching finals it was ridiculous what time did you start watching that stream on saturday uh about 4pm see I turned it on at like 2 o'clock oh. so then I went to Lewis's walked the dogs came back and had like two meals and then like 7 o'clock the prejudging was on it was like yeah. oh. it's like being on my phone on Nick Tregilly's stream which yeah. was which was good because he it was nice to be in like a private zoom meeting watching yeah. the show but if I could pick someone, the least person I would want to watch a stream with, yeah. it would be Nick Trigilli. And I actually I like his YouTube channel because he does have some interesting stuff to talk about on there. But if you want to listen to the most negative person who talks the worst stuff about bodybuilding, then go and follow Nick Trigilli. Well, what I did for free judging was watched Nick's stream with uh Fuad Abiyad talking over it because oh, better yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's like yeah, so his well. feedback was Labrada turned to the back and it went he went boring boring <laughs> I was just like come on man <laughs> to be fair nice. the stream quality did wash everyone out a little yeah. bit but really like you know it's almost like because he doesn't compete anymore himself. Yeah. Like how like how shitty can I talk about everyone? Yeah. Very petty, isn't he? So it's not even petty. It's just like you know, like saying, Oh, you guys all sucking off Hunter Labrada. Like <laughs> not really. He's just actually probably the one of the best guys up there. So really good, yeah. So um 
yep. ready for absolute technology now. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at some bodybuilding. You're going to share Cara sneaking into the cupboard to get cookies or? No. no that's what I like. Okay. Just me then? Just you, yeah. Let's just put you in the corner here. Oh, no, we're gone. That's fine. I'll get you back. Let's see. There we go. Okay, that's good. That's better. All right. So, yeah. So, we had men's bodybuilding. And it was between Hunter and Ian right from the go. Uh, that was kind of the... Was it, though? Was well, it? well, 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 well. That was the um, all the talk, right? And interestingly, the effect that all the talk and hype had on a certain second-place competitor will be the topic of our conversation post Tampa Pro breakdown. But uh, um, if we maybe go to the comparison there. Uh, so shall we go with, let's work our way from like, oh, fit singles. Cheers, fit singles. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Dave Palumbo. Um, it is. Yeah, it's Dave Palumbo, yeah. Sweet. Go on, if you want. Go on, if you want. No worries. Save that for Chris Edge. All right, cool. Um, so all I wanted to do is start from... Uh, is it Phil Clahar or something his name is? Yeah, okay. So you want to go through the individual pitches? We can do that. Yeah. So yeah. we'll just we'll just run down the top three or four. Yeah, top four is good because top, oh. first call out was top four, so let's do that. Um, okay. Cheers for singles. Yep. So this guy is uh, Dave Palumbo's client, I believe. Yeah. So can you see can you see the pop up now with the picture in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see him. Yeah, I okay. see it falling down a little bit. Um, I thought he was pretty good to be fair. Mm. I thought that the well, him and Dwayne especially were like standouts in the first mm. comparisons. Um, I'm not sure just because they were on the end, and you know, obviously in classic uh, streaming quality to try and make it more entertaining, they showed lots of shots from the side. Yeah, and nothing just straight on. You don't when you're filming a bodybuilding show, you don't really need to see what's going on at the back of the stage, or you know, if you're hitting a front double bicep, I don't or a back double bicep, don't really need to see the guy's midsection from the back. To be honest, this was this they did this better than the Olympia. Yes, because when when it's the Olympia, it's like it's at Universal Studios, and someone's like, you know, some film guy has been paid to like right. take panoramic shots and like make it look really fancy. They had two camera angles. They had one from the side which was a bit annoying, but okay, sometimes you're watching a bodybuilding show in the crowd and you're not dead centre. I know you are because you're a judge and you're always in the centre, but you know, us peasants don't always get to do that. Um, and then they had the actual view from the centre, but the biggest problem was that they kept cutting it off so you'd see maybe two competitors in the lineup and from the waist up. So I think they can do it better. Yep. So, I mean, this guy was pretty good, to be fair. I mean... Yeah. He's got his, I think his midsection is a little bit off compared to the other guys. He looks like a, a little bit of an older guy compared to the other, uh, like the top three. I might be wrong, but you can see it. I think you can see it in his physique a little bit. It's a little bit a collection of body parts rather than, you know. I thought, though, him and third place were probably two of the better conditioned guys at the whole show, though. Yeah. Like, especially if you watch Phil Kahar in the uh, in the quarter turns and everything, like his arms and shoulders were peeled. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was a pretty good... Um, well, it must have been a pretty good showing for him anyway, I think. And, uh, you know, I don't think he'd sort of do much in that kind of lineup. But, I mean, I think he was good enough, you know, for the... He, he was a clear top four. Yeah. So. Very hard. Lots of muscle. Just see if we can get a side shot before we move on to... There we go. There's a nice side chest, this, actually. Yeah. So, a yeah. Little slight, a little, perhaps a little slight in the hands. Yeah. Uh, if you, let's say, look at, like, like, divisions between his, like, delts and arms and stuff. Yeah. Like, that looked pretty freaky in, uh, in pre-joint. You could see it was, like, pretty dry, to be fair. Yeah. So, he looked good. So, looked yeah. Good. So, cheers. It looks like a little bit of a Johnny Jackson thing. Like, yeah. so. best strongest powerlifter in the world yeah. for a bodybuilder but um, 
bring the relax. Okay, so okay. is it Dwayne time? It is Dwayne Walker. So oh. I think he was one of the guys who caused the most controversy for the weekend. Oh, yeah. Reason why, I guess, I mean, it, I said to you straight away at prejudging, he's winning the show. Yeah. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, didn't even get a call out next to the top two. No. Which is, which is bullshit. I mean, you can't, yeah. you can't at least, you got to at least give him a look in. I mean, really, I mean, the only time they really do that is where they send one and two back is when it's so far mm. away from anyone else in the pack that it's like you're not even going to get a look because everyone there they're, they're that much better than you but really it's not the case with this guy this what? was sadly i feel um he was overlooked in that sense and sadly you know you hear about it in the bigger federations the global sort of you're, okay your ifbb and whatever um you know it was a case of Hunter being one two, and that was going to be, always be the case unless one of them was so off. And okay, maybe you could argue that Ian was, but all the hype was surrounding them on the way in. You know, well, you I, know, it became a spectacle, and there you go, and that was it. It was one two. I mean, okay, like I know they like the bigger guys, so you can make the case obviously that Hunter is bigger than this guy. But I mean, the guy's structure is probably superior to Hunter's. Yeah. He's, his actual separation and like muscle quality, like the striated pecs and things like that. Like, yeah, you're not no, seeing not. that a lot of other guys. No. So for me, and it's like his back wasn't weak. No. So, so what was it that he didn't, they did deserve to not even get a comparison, especially to Ian. Yeah. You no, know? like Ian was miles off. So I can understand them making the case for Hunter, but Ian, I thought that was a little bit of a, uh, he got pretty uh, duped, to be fair, I think. Yeah, we'll see what he looks like from the side. Because what I want to do is we want to go, we'll, we'll look at Hunter and we'll look at Ian, but I'd like to get to the comparisons as well, because I think that's where you can see really where it was quite um, unfair that he didn't get a look, really. Uh, we'll just see what it looks like from the back quick, because uh, you can see he, was, he, you know, he, he has a very dense back. Um, they were saying that perhaps hams and glutes compared to Hunter maybe weren't, quite there but they were they were compared to Ian so I don't really know why he didn't get that but yeah yeah so uh yeah I think he was he he should have the most case to be the most disappointed from the weekend I think yeah I agree um, okay, just, then. yeah he could that's that's a clear sign that there's obviously something a little bit fishy going on because you know he'd done enough to get a comparison mm. okay so um just a little thing for, for QE, QE is a tonsy. Um, this is Ian Valier, not Ivan Valier. <laughs> um, every, every message I received from QE last night, whilst we were watching it live, so they were saying his name, yet he continued to refer to him as Ivan Valier. So if we can just clear that up. Um, I think we'll call him Ivan from now on. I think that's a, uh, a good, good one, QE. Yeah. So I wonder actually if these are from the night show or not. Um, oh yeah. I don't know. See, nonetheless, that picture is definitely that looks like that's from prejudging. But yeah, yeah. I, I watched the video back from um, watched the video back from the evening show, and he did look about another thirty percent better. He did. Color alone, it just like transformed him how he looked. But I mean, uh, I mean, like he's still freaky in them side shots and everything. But he just looked really, like, really soft from the back, and really, like, it's almost like his legs look like an odd shape from the front. It's almost like his torso are really, really long, and he just looked, he looked thin. If that yeah. makes sense. thin for him, I guess. Um, to especially compared to Hunter, which I thought he would just like dwarf him in all the shots, but it didn't happen at all. Just not a lot going on in his back, is there really? It's, it's a weak point anyway for him. Uh, he's not got a strong back, and I think he, you know, he didn't do himself any favours um, with this showing. And if I can find a picture of his front double, he's he's not got a very nice front double. And I heard him say on one of the podcasts, um, and a lot of that, all the hype in the build up to it. Oh yeah, you know, he he, he gives Hunter the front the back the rear the front double. Sorry, um, and it's like. Well, 
you can you you can do something about it, surely, even if it's a posing thing, because he just looks uncomfortable when he does it. You he know? looks way better in these pictures than he did on the stream and the videos. Oh, there's no doubt about that. The That's stream terrible didn't really on the do it justice. Terrible. Yeah. So let's see if front find a front double because I think um, it kind of it just looks very uncomfortable in the shot. But he doesn't look he doesn't look nowhere near off in these pictures compared to what he did. So maybe it is a little bit of one of them scenarios that he had to be there. Well, I don't know because he, I mean, look, I think from the front he suffered a lot. He's got suit. I mean, come on. This is prejudging, yeah. Yeah, I and mean, we'll see in a minute when we get to the comparisons. His upper body here, I mean, and his legs. But compared to Dwayne's, like Dwayne's pecs and Dwayne's yeah. roundness in his yeah. arms, yeah. it's 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 yeah, it's pretty pretty poor judging. Um, really, there's no way of cutting that. But he almost had that kind of um, flat and spilled look. You know, the cloudy sort of look, and it's like it's hard to do. I don't know how to do it. How do you do it? One or the other. And uh, how the hell do you also fix that? You know, in the moment as well. We did a job of doing it. So, okay. So let's have a look at Hunter quick, and then we'll maybe look at some comparisons because uh, that'd be good to see. Sorry, sorry for all the bikini ass. Um, for anybody that doesn't want to see that, that's NPC. Oh yeah. Here's NPC. Okay, Hunter the boy. All right. So the thing that you know, the thing that stood out to me the most about Hunter that really, that not maybe not the most, but something that really set him apart, his color was so fucking good. Mm. His color was really good, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, and I, it's funny because these pictures aren't really showing him just as of what he looked like either. He looked better in the video. <laughs> yeah, he did. Stream. So, but um, you know, it's just little things like that. Is um, he? You know, when he walked out, it looked like there was something wrong with him. And initially it was, oh, he looks a bit, his colour looks off. And he couldn't say that with Hunter. You know, so immediately you've got something there that kind of sets you apart from another competitor. Yeah. You know, people need to take heed of that, really. So, I mean, obviously just off these pictures there, it's a, it's a clear win over Ian. Uh, debatable from third place. Yeah. But, I mean... <sighs> Let's we'll, we'll run. Should we run through the two twelve as well, and then we'll come back to the whole Ian scenario, shall we? Yeah. Before we before we do two twelve, you just want to look at the comparison shots quick because it'd be good to see them all. Uh, really see them together, right? So we can just go here. So techno technological. So technology. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's. Fivos didn't take these pictures clearly because everyone's in a transition here, so I'm lucky. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, <sighs> Hunter looks better here in this light, you know, in this kind of light, in this setback, slightly not totally zoomed up. But I just, you know, it, I always believe, and I said this, that a lay person should be able to pick the winner of a bodybuilding show. You know, someone who doesn't know the technicalities of bodybuilding should be able to say, really, that person's got the best physique. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find a lay person that doesn't know about bodybuilding not to pick Dwayne here. Yeah. You know. I mean, Ian doesn't look bad from the sides at all. In fact, he looks no, he's like strong from the sides. He is strong from the sides. It was really the front and the rear where it was like so noticeable. Yeah. So if anyone hasn't watched the streams, and I really don't think these pictures do justice of how bad it looked at the time. Mm. It was like, oof. Like you felt for him, didn't you? You did. You, did. you really did. You could see it in his face. Like he wasn't, yeah, you knew he was off. But this is a good, uh, this is a good example because this is a, that's a poor comparison between Dwayne and Ivan. Uh, Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan Valier. Yeah. I guess that's just the thing. It's like when you look at it like that, you're thinking, right, well, how, tell me what Ian has beat him on. Like, you know what, right, as well. And I think um, this is one of the kind of um, natty versus, not enhanced, but the federate, the differences in the federations. 
Dwayne looks sick in this shot, right? Where he's actually relaxed. Okay. Look at that top line. That's that's Phil Heath, William Bonac esque. You know, that kind of peck, Dell. Um and then in a moment he goes into a, a classic front relaxed, if I can and he looks way worse. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like it's uh just you know, I I, I almost <laughs> wish it, yeah. they just realised that it's not about just hitting that shot. It's about looking looking good in the shot. You know, Ian looks Ian looks pretty sick. Just stood relaxed there. You know, and in a minute he's going to go into his um, riding a bike. You know, front relaxed and so yeah. I do think this front double is pretty poor for Ian. I think he can do a lot better here. He loses all that width. He's just you know, got loads of tightness in his shoulders because yeah. that looks like. Like he's not trying to do a front double bicep, but it's like, it's almost like, you know, the same thing that Evan has. It's like he has a great chest from the side and then he actually goes into a front double bicep and his chest disappears. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think I wonder as well, I know that, uh, I wonder if it's this arm, I'm not sure, left arm, if anyone can't see me cursor, but uh, Ian has had tricep surgery, hasn't he? And it, as you can see the scar actually goes from the back. You can see the scar goes right down his lap. Um, so I'm not sure how they did the surgery, but it's almost like he's having a, you know, he can't get bring his lats out in this shot. He's not trying. His scapula's so retracted here. He's like he's got nothing going on with his torso. I mean, look at the difference between him and Dwayne. It's nuts, isn't it? That V taper. I mean, Dwayne is full Dorito there, isn't he? Look full at that. Dorito. And full then, Dorito. Like, so what is Ian's got no V taper there in comparison to Dwayne? So it looks like a frisp. You know the bacon crisps and yes. rectangle sort of yeah. <laughs> the crisp challenge. So by any way, by the way, I just want to say that you know I had you know Ian was my main guy going to, and I really like Ian Bell. Yeah, sorry, Ivan. Um, so if anyone thinks that I'm bagging on Ivan, I'm definitely not. It was just one of them things where it's like he just didn't produce the goods at the time. No. He's he is definitely one of you know my more liked bodybuilders uh, oh, yeah. recently. So when well, I mean, you go on a bodybuilding, and we've had this with a few uh, natural competitors, you go on a bodybuilding stage to be judged, and if you're not going to be happy with what people say your physique looks like, not your personality, then you shouldn't be on that stage in the first place. If you're not happy for someone to say you missed the mark, someone was better than you, then you need to find a different spot. So quick one. So hopefully Steve Lorius isn't subscribed and neither is Ivan Valier. I've not had a message from Steve yet. Um, I'm yep. waiting patiently. Yes. Of um, if that's not a reason for keen viewers to keep watching this podcast to wait and see if Ivan Valier gets in touch <laughs> or Steve Lorius. All right. Okay. Cool. Let's run through two twelve quick. Eh? Um, so Aaron Clark. Yeah, so Aaron Clark is one of these guys who, back in the day, oh yeah, showed loads of potential. And I don't know if he had, and this is just like this could be completely fake news, but I heard that he had like a massive breakdown, and that and then he, I don't know if he got addicted to drugs or whatever happened, but he just went off completely off the radar. And then physique just went to shit. And then all of a sudden, then he just got really thick in the waist. And oh, yeah. then this is a massive improvement from what he looked like last time he competed. Looks really good in some of these shots. Just so much dense muscle. Um, it was honestly really weird. I, don't, I honestly would like to know what happened. Because, I mean, I used to follow him on Instagram, like, back when he first started competing and, it might have even been like the 09 Olympia or something, um, or th w like way back when, and he was he was very good, and like everyone was like he's gonna be a force, and then all of a sudden I don't know what the hell happened. Do you remember he um, he moved to open right, and then it just it didn't work, and after that was when he kind of went off the boil. Maybe it was that. Maybe he's he's got he has got a strange physique. It's like he's got so much dense muscle. But he's kind of like, he's kind of got flat pecs in some shots. His waist is wider now. His legs baffle me the most because he's got a lot of muscle on his legs. Very dense teardrop. Yeah. But just the sweep just 
goes full frisp. You know, it just doesn't insert where it should. And, and that really hurts his V-taper, I think. Yeah, if, 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 if you put on a little bit more mass on them of doctors, a little yeah. bit more uh, shrinkage to the waist, that would look... I mean, we could probably Photoshop that to make that look wicked. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, that, it's, it's that little bit of um, outside sweep around by, you know, the bottom of his knee. Like right. that usually would you think with that much muscle on his legs that would like really, really come out, but it's it's I think it's just the structure and the insertions of his you know, into his waist which makes that that's why bodybuilding is such an illusion. You know, you can have if you've got, you know, a twenty eight inch waist, like you don't need stupid quads because everything you do is gonna make you you know, obviously you know, your your dimensions look ridiculous. You know what as well, and you're dead right about that, that it, it's that genetic component, isn't it? My, I'm going to compare myself to uh, IFBB Pro Aaron Clark now, so uh, shout out to <laughs> everybody went for that. But so my definitely better. Definitely, my quads insert so much better than his. So my sweep inserts right at my hip. So when I have a, when my waist is in and my quads are full, it mm. creates such a taper. Whereas, whereas here, Aaron's Aaron's quads just insert so low. Did he just, you know, I don't know what he'd be able to do to, to change that, really, you know. It would just need, to, it would need to shrink his actual, like, hip bones. <laughs> yeah, his bones, the actual bones. This isn't really, I mean, it isn't really like a, a, a bloated midsection scenario. I mean, whether he's like, obliques have just got thicker, I don't know. But I mean, yeah. As I said, like I used to really rate him, and he yeah. does look, he's like cool to watch on Instagram, train, yeah. like, squat stupidly heavy. He's dead thick and dense, and this is by far one of the best showings he's had in ages. He looked great, yeah. So shout out to him for doing that because I think you're right. I think, you know, the, he's, he, for someone to go off, uh, you know, to disappear from bodybuilding for that long, um, it's hard enough to come back, especially when he was doing when he was so good. And I had also heard, you know, similar rumours that you know perhaps things weren't going great. So yeah, he did look. He looked wicked. So shout out to Aaron Clark. I'm um, sure he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Good okay. joke of the podcast. Look, he's a, he's an AA Ron as well, isn't he? Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> he definitely he actually is. Yeah, AA Ron Clark. Yeah. Okay, so I um I'll be interested to see what you think of this because um I I think I had Derek Oslin in two, not three. Um. Uh... Just bring up number two of uh, the, the two of these guys. I'm getting confused, I think, with. Yeah, let's, bring, let's go. I mean, okay, then. Well, George, I mean, it was interesting to see Aaron Clark. Uh, everyone knows George. Anyone who's interested in bodybuilding at all knows that George Peterson looks wicked. You know, so if we go straight to comparisons, Peterson, people, Peterson would have won the Open as well. Yeah, no yeah, question. I think so. No question. Um, okay, so if we go to comparisons. Okay. So on the left is uh, Green Trunks is Derek Oslin and uh, next to George Peterson in black. Oh, Flex Diesel. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I like Flex Diesel personally. Okay. But it was close, right? It was a it was a good it was a close two three. Yeah, I think that um, Derek has the slightly nicer shape. I think that Flex Diesel was just that little bit harder yeah uh, did you hear him talk in the interviews as well no no well comedy he, he got the most jokes voice ever okay <laughs> what are we talking ronnie voice or like the deepest oh really kind of like yeah like american like oh, i can't even explain it okay like you're not gonna do you're not gonna do an impression no i think i even know how to do it i don't think i can get my voice that deep Okay, I still I think all the viewers still want to hear you try. Okay, what's his name? Flex Diesel. Uh, actual. It's Flex. No, sorry. I'll I'll just bring up a video of him on Instagram for sure. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. His name's actual Flex Diesel, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, his name's actually Detrick Bo Lewis, but his Instagram is Flex Diesel. 
<laughs> Probably got no videos of him talking because his voice is so jokes. Just here we go. <laughs> this is the video I watched. Is the sound going to come through though? Probably not. If it's not, then we'll dub it. Uh, you can do. You can dub all the <laughs> It's not going to come through. It's not going to come through. You'd be able to hear it by now. So oh, can you not hear it? No. No. Oh no. Okay. I'll just play it for you. Never mind. Okay, go on. Never mind. So yeah. Anyway, voices jokes. But yeah, I think that was a. I think it was a good two, three. Anyway, it was close. Um, but yeah, you're right. He is a bit harder. Um, but I guess then it's just yeah, it's George Peterson's wicked, right? Yeah. Do you want to listen to Bo Lewis talk? Oh, you got it. Yeah. Shoot. What you know you need to work on it. Told me to do. Try to bring up all the weak areas. You know, like I've been asking you. Tell me about my bad things. I don't want to hear the good. So that's what I've been trying to do. Work on bring. It sounds like he's had the opposite of helium and has had the. Is it hydrogen? Is that real? That's real. <laughs> I can't even do it. It's a joke. Because your friends and family, they'll, they'll tell you how this year, you know, you were a guy doing any show from now on, 12 star. You you ain't done on stage where, where everybody sees it as a top contender. You're going to go ahead and see it because you, you're looking at it on TV. That was worth it. That was worth all that oh, mess. Oh, wow. Hear that. That was brilliant. Uh, what kind of cartoon of it, like, basically, of someone talking like that? It's like, he should definitely be a voice actor for something. Like oh, that. yeah, definitely. Like, uh, it's like, um, like a, a bodyguard's voice. It's the expected <laughs> bodyguard to sound like. Yeah, bouncer. Someone not letting you in. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, well anyway, yeah, um, that was yeah, that was close. Um, I think it was a clear Aaron Clapp's clear for not you know, not in not in that two three. Oh, I would say as well, um, a big fan of Santi Aragon, and I believe he had uh, he was on the private live stream with uh, Nick Trigilli for the finals last night. Um, it was just myself, Cara, Santi Aragon, Nick Trigilli, and eighty eight <laughs> other people. Um, <laughs> But it was interesting. He said, "I think he had an issue with backstage where he went hypo, uh, Santiago, and um, he had to be given a lot of glucagon and stuff like that. And he just really wasn't looking how he was meant to. So he's, he, but he still took six, and he's a wicked poser, um, really good physique, and I think he's far better in two twelve than he is in classic because he has to cut down so much, uh, and he's got wicked hair as well." Yeah, yeah, he's got wicked hair. We saw a look alike today in Ultraflex, don't we? So it is, yeah. Fake Santi. So I guess all right, so I'll wrap this up. But um yeah. I mean there's not much to say about George Peterson, right? Other than that you're right, he probably could have won the whole show. Yeah, I think he's just got like I kept thinking of him coming into this being a classic guy, like he was just gonna get dwarfed, but like he's got no. so much muscle. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Some of his posing pisses me off, right? Because he hits like a weird um, front lap. I don't know what it is. It just looks a but little uncomfortable. He's been for three years and hasn't had to do one. Yeah, we actually did. He did. A, he did sort of a front lap in, uh, in classic as one of his classic poses. Just kind of puts his hands on his hips. I don't know. It's it's a bit weird, but there's no doubt in his. It's just so much nutty muscle, and he's not even in. I don't think he's in the condition here that he was when he did classic. And he's still hard on everyone by a mile. Yeah, do you think that some of that's like putting on like 10, 15 pounds of muscle and then waiting for it to refine? It's got to be, yeah. But it's only going to get harder, right? For um, That's not a good shot. I mean, but it's, it's only going to get harder, right? You know, between now and the Olympia. So Yeah. Because I mean, everyone's making the case that he could end up winning the 212. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I don't disagree. You know? I just, yeah, I wonder with guys like... Kamal, and I mean, I know Flex Lewis isn't going to be there anymore, but I mean, you've got some stupidly short, but very, very round guys. Is Kamal going to get into the Olympia this year? Uh, that's a thing. Um, but, you know, with Peterson being so separated and hard, it's going to be a very tough person to beat, let's just put it that way. 
Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, this is Santiago in the middle with Wicked Her. Um, so, yeah, he had a bit of a film because of whatever went on, but yeah, he's a wicked bodybuilder. Overall, 212 is great. Um, I'm, I'm, there's Derek me. Lunsford was in there's there me, as well. 30 years. Um, Derek Farnsworth. Uh, oh, yeah, Lunsford. Sorry, Farnsworth. Yeah. The uh, the one that's talked about on Heavy Muscle Radio all the time. All the time. I see you and Derek Palumbo's best mate. So. Yeah. He's a massage therapist as well, isn't he, for a lot of pros. So, uh, And did you also see the uh, midget who won the overall this weekend? Oh, I was going to try and surprise you with that. How were you? So let's see. Uh, wonder wonder if it's on here, because uh, I feel that people need to see this. And no, it wasn't Dan North, so. It wasn't Dan North, no. Okay. Uh, da, 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 was, show, was it? Yeah. Uh, it was NPC, though, right? So it's going to be. So technology. So technology. What's the uh, What's the name of um, the midget from Lord of the Rings? Not Lord of the Rings. Sorry, what am I on about? Um, Game of Thrones. Tyrion Lannister. Yeah. His name's not Tyrion. It's not Tyrion. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I'm going to wonder. Oh, okay, maybe we'll have to just post it. But anyway, he's, yeah, he looks he looked ridiculous, this guy. <laughs> I've not only seen one back shot. That's all I've seen. Because obviously he got sent around in bounce for group shots. <sighs> just, uh, I might be able to find him. Because actually, I don't like this person's Instagram, Nick Strength and Power. But he's been did some videos and he kind of did a big shout out to him so I wonder so why do you like Nick Strength and Power controversial why don't I like Nick Strength and Power yeah because I like to listen to actual bodybuilders talk about bodybuilding so like Dave and Chris and not just some dude in his basement yeah <laughs> do you have to do you need any more than that uh no valid point um I uh, I actually quite like watching some of the updates. I do get it does get a little bit annoying where it's like got some interesting stories for you again this week. The same intro every time. Okay, I've got the guy. By the way, if that's his joke, if that is the joke, the fact that it's I've got some interesting stories for you this week because yeah. they're not always that interesting, you know. Um, but they are still quite good to watch and. If we ever manage to get on there and we all of a sudden go viral, I'll be like, cheers, Nick, you're my best mate. So, yeah. so I'll just say, you say, weren't you uh, having a go at me that one time? And I'll say, no, that was definitely my co-host. I love your channel. Well, <laughs> shout out to After for looking wicked. Cheers, Ash. Look at him. Got a little shout out on the podcast with his swollen quads. All right, then. There we go. <laughs> Jokes. Is that Brandon Curry in a suit? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You don't look as good as Ronnie Coleman in a suit, do you, Brandon? Come so on. we can take the piss out of him for a bit, okay? Like, and I can't really because I mean, this guy's four foot five allegedly, so he's only I'm only seven inches taller than him. Jesus Christ! But we can take the piss, but he's he looks fucking wicked. <laughs> like he's taller this... than you, though, right? What? He is taller than you, right? I mean, if that's a serious question, it's not. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It's jokes. Look at that. It's not the best picture. Because, you know, like a lot of people who do have, what, what's, the, what's the PC word? Dwarfism, I guess. Yeah, dwarfism is the condition. They usually, yeah, so. they usually don't have good proportions and they no. don't have, they have kind of like, their limbs are so short they don't look right as far as like to be like, he's got good as tags as well like, I don't know ridiculous. I don't know if he would be considered a dwarf because he's got to be surely come on what's what's oh is there a technical term for that then like a, a like a standard height that you have okay to... yeah, yeah yeah four foot ten or less Oh my word, I'm four inches off a door. Wow. Have you, um, just going back to this, I had a conversation with my client, Jake Darcy. So shout out to Jake because he does watch the podcast. He likes the podcast, yeah, shout out to him. Um, so technology, 
So that is Ronnie Conway in a suit. If you've not seen that picture before, I'm sure you have. Where's that, sorry? Uh, that is at one of the Olympias, Ronnie Coleman in a suit. Where are we looking? On my screen. Oh, no. you can't see your screen. Oh, yeah, of course you can't. I'm trying uh, I'm gonna, but anyway, we're done with that now, so I'll stop sharing my screen. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. Right, so that's out, Ronnie Coleman in a suit. And obviously, Brandon Curry has been... Uh, in a suit with obviously lots more tailoring, but Jake seems to think that if you've ever seen Super Mario Bros, yeah, Goombas in the back of that photo, <laughs> that's what Ronnie Coleman looks like in a suit. So I thought that was a pretty good comparison that, is. that week. So, so what we were going to talk about this week, but I think we should do this as a separate podcast. I think so. I think it was a good an hour and six minutes in, and yeah. So basically. Being obviously, by the way, well done for winning the bet from last week. First of all, well, do you want to put up? Do you want to put a bit of light on your face? Because uh, it's really dark. Sorry. Yeah, better. Thanks. Um, did we decide what I win by? Because I was quite non-committal because I felt like I was actually going to lose. But oh, what do you want to win? What do you want to win? Um, okay, I shall come up with a booby prize for you. For, for you. Yeah, that's it. It'll be uh, no, no, a booby prize for you, like you know, like a, like a token, like prize that you know you'd be pretty happy to get it, but it's not going to be of anything of real value. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, if, if you're ever going to look forward to anything, I mean, it's the way you've just described something that is bodybuilding related, though, that's the that's okay. the stipulation. Okay, very good. I might, have, I might have a fourth place medal somewhere, maybe. Okay. Like, Yes. What about me? Optimal branch warren wraps from today. That's pretty good, actually. I did give you some of those, didn't I? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we were going to talk about, because I really felt sorry for Ian. Sorry, Ivan. Val, yeah. Yeah. Val Rary, as they were telling us on some of the podcasts and things. That's not his name. No. Um, but um, <laughs> reasons why you miss your peak. Now, we're not talking about messing up your peak week because we think that there are a number of factors involved in peaking for a show of some things that are out of your control so we're basically going to leave it at that and we will cover them on our next podcast but i mean you know we could do a whole podcast on like you know don't fuck up your peak week mm -hmm. but there is a number of factors, but maybe people think, no way, that's bro science. There's no chance. But 100%, there's a number of factors that can be played into, you know, whether it be for any athletes with performance, whether you, you know, suffer with nerves or whatever, that can drastically affect the way you physically look. And that's through a, like a hormonal response. So we will cover that in detail, I think. But I think that's a really cool subject to talk about because we always talk about now you know down the line of like being close to being contest ready and your physique changes by the hour sometimes and that is really the case for a lot of people that some people like you know can be like 50 percent better 50 percent worse all the regards to how they feel and how they look you know yeah it is why and it's why it doesn't matter how, how you look at 20 weeks out 10 5 2 days 2 hours because yeah, there's so so much can change, and and so much is in, so much not in your control. But at the same time, it's that acknowledgement that certain things aren't under your control. But yeah, agreed, agreed. So yep. So sorry, but you're only getting an hour and ten minutes of podcast tonight. That's all right. Well, let's um, wrap it by saying, just you know, consider consider we did Tampa Pro Rapple. Um, let's finish it with saying uh, I've heard a lot of people saying, like Lee Priest, Flex Wheeler, that they are they think they can see Hunter Labrada as a Mr Olympia. Thoughts? Mm, I struggle to see it myself at the moment. Mm. At the moment, only because I think that like if you compare him to, let's take a, a top five, Rowley. Bonac, Rami, Roden, Phil. I don't think he's anywhere near that league yet. Yet. No. 
So, well, take out um, okay, you, take out Phil and take out Phil and um, Sean. So say Brandon, Rowley, Rami, Bonac, and Stephen. I don't think he's in that. I don't think he's in that either. But you know, I guess that. Uh, I don't. Th- I, I think there may be like you know when you've got that vision in your head of what he really looked like, and that was kind of like what he looked like on the stream. Like he did look like a little bit wishy washy from the back, as in just his upper. His obviously glutes were peeled. Yeah. No time that. But you know, the level of density them guys all have through their backs is like you know, and that's an age thing. That's not um, you know, was he like mid twenties? Yeah, he's not an old guy. Twenty six. So really, like I said, that's that's something you can't rush. Unfortunately, look at someone like Rowley; like he's absolutely freaky. Yeah, you know. So I just don't think he's in that round yet. So I think he's got a lot of size to put on, a lot of muscle density at least mm-hmm. to be considered in that picture. And you know, as someone maybe gets a little bit older with you know that amount of time that he just spent in the gym, like is his proportions going to get better? If they do, then like hats off that he's done that very very well. But you know, like, is his waist going to get bigger along with everything else coming up like everyone else's does? Yeah. I think, for me, I think where he's going to, where his downside is going to be compared to a lot of those guys we just spoke about, he's he's quite narrow. And when I say that, it's, you know, Lee Labrada was quite narrow. You know, he didn't have wide clavicles. He didn't have Jay Cutler, Jimmy, wide clavicles. Um, the only bodybuilder that has done well recently that you wouldn't consider super wide. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm thinking about me, but uh, <laughs> uh, the only guy that's done well that someone's called narrow recently is Phil Heath, and he's got that round bubbly muscle that Hunter doesn't have. So I think where he might struggle is stood next to those guys just looking a lot smaller. At yeah. the moment, at the moment, you know, it'd be interesting to see going forward. His, I mean, his legs are world class, so I think that at least he's kind of like, you know, he's got that on his side. Question: How do you think he'd stand next to Flex Lewis in the Open this year? Because I think Flex would blast him. I think Flex is a bet. It's just a version of Hunter is a version of Flex that's not quite ready yet. Yes, agreed. I like the way you asked me the question and answered it for yourself. So because no. <laughs> I wasn't going to let your answer about Flex. Yeah. You just like oh Flex Bezies. <laughs> um, so yeah, good. We'll wrap it up there, shall we? That's. Uh, we got we've got a nice little podcast topic for next week, and uh, we actually got to cover some bodybuilding. So whether you guys out there are so accustomed to just like Bance and me and Aaron talking about different things of bodybuilding, occasionally you're going to actually have to listen to some bodybuilding chat. Yeah, this was the whole idea of this podcast four months ago. It just took us four months to get there. So, yep, sweet. All right, Natty Muscle Radio. There's always another level. See you next week. See you next week.